So, as much as this is a book about the experience of traveling, the contemplation of cities that are vast in scale and villages that are as remote and strange as anything Westerners are ever likely to encounter, it is also a book that tries to describe another kind of journey. Much of what people do today disguises a desperate search for meaning, the result of the crisis of belief that has become a major problem of the Western world. On the one hand, the elites and their high culture suffer a loss of confidence, and aimless consumerism is widespread. On the other, powerful new myths arise, as with the sporting heroes. Programming is the art of expressing solutions to problems so that a computer can execute those solutions. Much of the effort in programming is spent finding and refining solutions. Often, a problem is only fully understood through the process of programming a solution for it.
The definition of a disaster varies by organization. Various entities have different pain thresholds that define when an incident becomes a disaster. A bank, for example, will have different criteria than a poison control hotline. With this fact in mind, any organization should begin the process of implementing first alert and response teams after it has completed a business impact analysis. Margaret Simons explains the changes taking place in the Australian media. She analyzes audiences, our major media organizations, the role of government, and the implications of all these for our society and our democracy. Her examination leads her to the conclusion that the challenges facing the content providers in the modern world are part of a broader striving, a very old struggle, we might call it the search for meaning. Never has the world of journalism been so explosive, so global, and so competitive. Forget hourly news flashes, we live in a world of 24-hour breaking news with radio and TV stations and internet sites updating stories by the minute and newspapers adjusting to stay fresh, in-depth, and relevant.
Karl Marx is arguably the most famous political philosopher of all time, but he was also one of the great foreign correspondents of the 19th century. During his 11 years writing for the New York Tribune, their collaboration began in 1852, Marx tackled an abundance of topics from issues of class and the state of world affairs. When buying a house, for example, it's best to let our unconscious mull over the many variables. But when we're picking stocks and shares, intuition often leads us astray. The trick is to determine when to lean on which part of the brain, and to do this, we need to think harder and smarter about how we think. The human animal's status is the only clever tool user who can talk about our feelings is crumbling. Prairie dogs can make up words for new animals. Crows are born with the ability to make tools. Elephants recognize and stroke the bones of a lost family member. As biologists delve into these subjects, they are demonstrating that we are not nearly as unique as we once thought. It's the perfect time, scientifically speaking, to reassess our place in the animal kingdom.
Clemenston wanted to see if claims of question dodging actually held up. Historically, not necessarily in the unique case of Trump. So Clemenston analyzed the transcripts of 14 presidential debates from 1996 to 2012. Overall, he found 51 acquisitions of question dodging, 26 by Dems, 25 by Republicans. Such an agreement would include recognition that the world must aim as soon as possible to hold global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, a long-term, low-carbon future, five-year updated action plans that recognize the developing climate reality, and aid to those countries that did little to cause climate change but are most at risk from it. Although Botswana's economic outlook remains strong, the devastation that AIDS has caused threatens to destroy the country's future. In 2001, Botswana has the highest rate of HIV infection in the world. With the help of international donors, it launched an ambitious national campaign that provided free antiviral drugs to anyone who needed them. And by March 2004, Botswana's infection rate has dropped significantly.
Legal writing is usually less discursive than writing in other humanities subjects, and precision is more important than variety. Sentence structure should not be too complex, it is usually unnecessary to make extensive use of adjectives or adverbs, and consistency of terms is often required. For example, when describing a case, the plaintiff should always be referred to as the plaintiff.